Hello besties, welcome to today's video. It's currently Friday, which means full week of work officially done. I feel so good. Honestly, like I'm so proud of myself for finding a way to balance everything and honestly just being gentle with myself because I was just feeling things out, going with the flow, figuring out how this new routine and schedule was gonna work for me and I have made it work. I'm so proud of myself. And now the weekend is here, which I just started work and I already have a three day weekend. How awesome is that? So we're just gonna use this entire weekend to rest, recover and do self care. And the first self care thing I'm gonna do is work out. If you guys saw Monday's video, I talked about how I wasn't able to work out on Thursday morning, nor Thursday afternoon, nor Friday morning. So I'm gonna work out now. My body is literally craving it. We're gonna get right into it. I have missed this. You would think I haven't worked out in like 15 years. And I have a couple of videos saved that I need to catch up with. So I'm just so excited to get into them. Heather Robertson released some new videos, obviously from the schedule I'm following. Fit by Mick has also uploaded some videos. I have a lot to catch up on. Also, I know I said I was not gonna use this for a pre-workout. I keep delaying it. I have been using it for protein as well though, but it's just so easy to use it for pre-workout. I just, I love this cup. <laughs> oh my gosh, and can we talk about Miley Cyrus's new song? If you guys have been here long enough, you know I am a Miley stan. That is my girl, I love her music. And her new song, so good, I kid you not. I literally played it my entire drive to work, my entire drive to lunch, my entire drive back from lunch, my entire drive back home. And I am not over it, it is so freaking good. Anyways, let's get into working out, cheers. and I feel like I've been thrown against that wall. I don't know if this is just me, but whenever I oversleep, because last night I went to sleep at 10.30, woke up at 7.30, so that's what? 11, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, Nine hours that I slept. And whenever I sleep more hours, I feel more tired. mid-workout but i wanted to talk about penny bradshaw this girl man she literally challenges me in the best way possible like all of her videos are pretty much strength based and hit workouts i love her workouts they literally have me sweating up a storm so much i've been pretty much following her videos after the heather robertson videos sometimes if i don't like the heather robertson video of the day i will do this one and then the Fit by Mick one. So I just kind of alternate. It works out having like three different people that I'm currently obsessed with their workouts. I just love the whole layout of it. Again, she is like my strength queen. But I'm only going to do a little bit of hers today because I started off with the Heather Robertson workout. So that already took a lot of my strength away. So I'm going to do this specific one tomorrow. But I just wanted to check in and let you guys know about Miss Penny Bradshaw because she is killing it and she is killing me but i'm grateful i'm so grateful because i love her workout great start to my day i love it it's saturday it's 11 we are getting a workout in afterwards we're gonna go get some mcdonald's because i've been craving mcdonald's i've been really good eating at home the entire week mcdonald's sounds good i'm gonna go get some i just just finished watching you this show is i'm sorry like it is low-key kind of funny because these people are crazy like they're so crazy and the way they just gaslight each other and turn on each other but it was so good i literally cannot wait for season four like i need to know how it's gonna go i think it comes out in february let's see 
February 9th. Okay, I'm actually so excited. The way love <laughs> was just beyond crazy. If you guys saw my last review of season two, I talked about how I actually liked love at the beginning, but then she just got crazier and crazier. Despite all of that, I don't think I like love. I just love Victoria Pedretti. Like she slayed that role. Like it was phenomenal. The acting was amazing. But also so did Penn Badgley. Like as much as I don't like Dan Humphrey, he slayed the role. It, the show's so good. It's so good. Even if I laughed because it's literally like some of the things that happened in it were just, they make no sense. Like the way that nobody thought to check the cameras. You're telling me nobody saw that one camera that was facing the side of her bakery where they would take people in and out. Like nobody thought to check that camera across the street. <sighs> also, they've done multiple murders without wearing gloves and fingerprints have never been found. The time that they did do, Na I think her name was Natalie, I forgot, the neighbor lady. When they did get rid of her, they did wear gloves. That was the only time in the entire show they wore gloves. Every other time, they never really wore gloves. And I'm like, so the cops here weren't like doing fingerprints. Were they not searching good enough? No, they didn't check the surveillance footage. Yeah, like I said, this show is that that part of the show makes it funny, but it's it's still really good despite all of that. And I cannot wait for season four. Alright, well, that was basically my little rest and recover day. I spent the entire day finally finishing the show you because I was moving so slow. Cheers, besties. It's 5.33. I did wake up exactly at 5 today, which was awesome. I feel like I'm slowly starting to get into that groove where 5 a.m. is no longer a hassle. It's just, it's what's normal for me. It's enjoyable. So today is Sunday and I'm about to sit down and do a little bit of my journaling and reading. Also get ready for my workout <laughs> with my pre-workout. If you guys know, you know, you know my little coffee. And I know like for most people when you do a rest day you think of like not working out but honestly like i enjoy working out and my body literally craves the workout so i think it's a good little balance of getting my workout done in the morning and then literally the rest of the day i don't do anything especially right now on the weekends you know i'm really proud of myself for feeling out the week and like not being super harsh on myself for not being able to work out on Thursday, for having to move rest days and all of that. And, you know, we're learning. We're learning along the way. And if we just assume we're gonna be tired the entire week, then we're gonna be tired the entire week. And I tried not to assume that, you know, I was gonna be tired after work, that I was going to hate having to come home and do all these other things. But like, I've literally been enjoying everything. And just know, sometimes when you enjoy things, you're still gonna complain about them, you know? like. I was last week with the whole, I wasn't even complaining. I was just talking about how, like, I was literally so busy. I didn't really have much time to go on social media, which isn't a bad thing. It's not a bad thing to not be able to go on social media, but it's just, it's new. And so that's why I was kind of like talking about, you know, not having time or feeling tired, which I was a little tired. Again, like I'm listening to myself, you know, I'm listening to myself. I gave myself that Wednesday afternoon to not do anything. That was like a really good recharge day. And then again, I also didn't work out on Thursday morning. So yeah, it's not like I was going like, go, 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 go every single day, every minute of the day. It's just that I started doing a lot more than what I was used to because I have like a huge time block that I lost. So it's just this readjustment period, but I'm getting used to it. And I'm actually, I really liked last week. So we'll see how this new week goes, but for now, we're not focusing on work. That's one thing that I don't like to do is bring my work home. You know, once I leave the building, my mind clocks out with it and it does not like to think about it. So we'll figure out next week, next week. So uh, do you guys like me talking about Atomic Habits? Because I do. So I'm gonna talk about it. If you're also reading Atomic Habits, this is kind of like a book club we're reviewing. So <laughs> I'm going to read something from page 142 and He's talking about how a lot of the times we spend more time planning something than we actually do taking action on it. And this is something I've talked about plenty of times before. But basically, 
let's say you're trying to lose weight, right? It's so easy for us to just plan it out, right? Plan all of the things that we have to do before we actually start doing what we have to do. So we'll plan out, you know, how we're gonna do this. Like, okay, I'm gonna start meal prepping. I'm gonna start going on walks. I'm gonna start working out. I'm gonna start eating healthier, making healthier options. It's that whole planning process. But when we're stuck in that planning process, the only thing we're doing is procrastinating, actually doing the action because doing that makes us feel like we're moving towards the goal but we're not actually moving towards the goal because we never get out of that planning phase we just keep planning and planning but the actual action would be actually working out actually going for the walks actually making healthier choices and so let me read what he says sometimes motion is useful but it will never produce an outcome by itself it doesn't matter how many times you go talk to the personal trainer that motion will never get you in shape only the action of working out will get the results that you're looking to achieve. If motion doesn't lead to results, why do we do it? Sometimes we do it because we actually need to plan or learn more, which is okay, right? Planning is a good thing. But more often than not, we do it because motion allows us to feel like we're making progress without running the risk of failure. Most of us are experts at avoiding criticism. It doesn't feel good to fail or to be judged publicly, so we tend to avoid situations where that might happen. And that's the biggest reason why you slip into motion rather than taking action. You want to delay failure. And so my question to you guys is actually, I have a bad habit of deleting clips when I no longer need them. But if you guys remember from the Christmas special, me and my sisters were doing a little group circle. We were answering questions from the we're not really strangers game. And one of the questions was what's scarier? failure or success and it would be really cool if you guys answered if you feel comfortable answering this question in the comments down below let me know what your thoughts are obviously there's no wrong answers but for me personally i think success is scarier i feel like they're both just equally as scary but for me i think success is a little bit scarier only because failure is comfortable you know i feel like i can so easily justify myself if i do fail because I would expect that of myself. It's so much easier to set yourself up for failure than it is to expect success. And so examples would be like when you're in school and you're gonna take a test, you would automatically be like, oh, I'm gonna fail the test, I'm gonna fail the test. Just in case you fail the test, you already knew you were gonna fail the test. But you rarely go in and say, oh, I'm gonna pass the test, I'm gonna pass the test. And then like, let's say you fail, and then it feels so much worse because you set yourself up for success, but you didn't do it. So it's just, adding to that whole self-belief that you're only set to fail. Other instances would be like YouTube, right? Like how many times did I want to do YouTube, but then I didn't do YouTube because I was like, what if I fail? What if, you know, nobody cares about my videos? And so it was just so much easier to continue failing at that dream of mine because it was so comfortable. But what if i did do youtube and people actually enjoyed my content what if i did do youtube and my videos blew up my my channel blew up and then now all of a sudden i'm here with success something i'm so unfamiliar with something i don't know that's very scary and unknown what am i going to do then so it's kind of easier to just stay here where you expect that failure because you know what failure feels like i guess just to clarify i think failure is always going to suck a lot more than success for sure but i think for me success is just scarier because it's unknown and failure is very comfortable and if i fail i will just so easily be like oh yeah i knew i was gonna fail but if i succeed i'd be like okay what now like what's next what do i do now you know anyways that's the team let me know what your answer is down below <laughs> one thing i've really been prioritizing after my workout is my after workout recovery and that is this little foam roller. I always make sure that I roll out after every single workout, especially with my back area, because that tends to get very tense, especially because of the way that I sleep. So I like to make sure that every workout I ended with this. It just makes my body feel a lot better, less tight, less blah, 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 less tense. My ultimate favorite thing recently is my foot roller. This is uh, Brenda's Christmas present to me. We went to Target and she was like, oh, what do you want for Christmas? And I was like, this, honestly, get yourself a foot massager. I know it probably sounds silly, but get yourself a foot massager. It has been the best thing ever. I used to have this little like pain on the bottom of my heel. 
I think maybe from the way that I like stand when I'm squatting and stuff, it went away after literally using it one time. Feet health, don't neglect them. They do so much for us. Okay, I just finished working out and I ended up working out for 62 minutes, which burned me 320 calories. Mid-workout guys, I signed up for a yoga class and I'm excited to go to it. First of all, yoga is relaxing. Second of all, you guys know it's been on my bucket list to go to a yoga class for a really long time in a studio. And then um, another thing is also, it's very relaxing. So I'm excited to go. And I would be lying if I told you I wasn't a little bit nervous. Um, you know, social anxiety things. It's just that whole unknown thing that we were talking about, right? It's like, I don't know what to expect. Like what if, <laughs> I don't know, you know? You know, you know. I don't know what I'm nervous about, but I'm nervous about something. Despite that little feeling of fear, I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna go by myself because obviously like my sisters don't like yoga and it's okay, but I'm gonna go have some fun time, spend a little me time at the yoga class, but I'm gonna go take a shower first and then I'll get ready to go to my yoga class. All right, it's gonna go ahead and enjoy my delicious breakfast here before I go to yoga. I've actually been craving protein waffles for a little bit. Well, I was actually craving like regular waffles with almond butter and bananas, but we didn't have regular waffles. But protein waffles actually sounded just as good. So I'm excited to eat this and then get ready to go to my first in-studio yoga class. I'm so excited. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and fold my clothes here. I needed to wash so that I could have some clothes to go to yoga in. And then also so that I have clothes to work out for this next week. I actually saw this one TikTok the other day that was like, when you're just laying in bed and then you remember that you did laundry two days ago and you forgot to take your laundry out of the washer. Like that was literally me for so long. Why am I not in focus? Like what's, what's going on here? That used to be me. If you guys have been watching since the California days, you guys know that I've been working on putting my clothes to wash and actually paying attention and taking them out and moving them when they're actually done. And I've been pretty good at it. But the reason why I wanted to bring it up is because I used to be that person that would be so lazy when it came to laundry. Like I just hated having to fold my clothes. I hated having to move my clothes from the laundry to the dryer and then going to take the clothes out of the dryer and bringing them back and folding them. Like that was not me at all. But now I've changed that and I'm working towards becoming better at it. But I wanted to bring it up because now again, I only ever speak from experience. Like this is me talking about how I've been able to better myself, how I've been able to work on myself. And okay, the fact that this is not focusing on me is making me so mad. I tend to take things on as a personality trait. Now this is where like, this is the, the the bad side of what I was talking about. I think it was on the last Monday's video how I brought up that, you know, taking on identities for things that you want to do helps you stay motivated because it feels like you deserve it, you know? I work out, but I've always felt it weird to say that I like working out or that I am a fitness person because if I tell someone, they're gonna look at me and they're gonna be like, but you don't look like you like fitness. So I have like the sense of imposter syndrome when it comes to it and I don't wanna say, oh, I am this thing because then it means that I have to look like what everyone else expects this thing to look like. That's the good side of taking on identities is claiming your identity and you know, claiming those good identities and saying like, oh, I am that, I deserve to have that title because I work hard towards it. But then there's the other side of it that's like the bad side, which is, a toxic trait of mine. For example, in me as an anxious person, right? I used to literally keep myself from doing things because I would just automatically be like, oh, I can't do it because I'm an anxious person. I will get anxious. I always used to say that ahead of time, right? It goes in with that whole setting myself up for failure. Like I'm just expecting myself to always be anxious in every situation. So I am anxious in every situation because it's what I expect of myself. And so I will take on that identity and then I'm just keeping myself stuck because I'm never working towards moving away from that because I'm like, that's my excuse for everything. It's comfortable to just be like, oh, I'm anxious. This is why I'm not going to go and meet new people because I'm an anxious person and I'm scared and I'll just, I'd rather stay where I'm comfortable. But I've been trying to move past that and not let that stop me. And for example, you know, this week I started at a new place, which means that I was meeting new people at work and stuff. And normally, 
I'm a very quiet person. Like if you ever meet anyone that knows me from like high school, the first thing they would tell you is that I was quiet, that I was a shy kid because I was. But I'm not letting that go into my adulthood because I'm no longer trying to identify myself as being a shy person. I am a shy person, but I'm not identifying myself as a shy person and letting that stop me. So when I do go and I'm in a new setting, for example, I'm gonna go to yoga, I'm gonna be shy, I'm gonna be nervous, but I'm not gonna let that stop me. I'm gonna push past that and even if I stutter when I talk, even if I get nervous, if my voice cracks, if I'm sweating, if my glasses fog up, because that happens a lot. If you're a glasses wearer, you totally know the struggle of talking to someone and then your glasses fog up. It's so embarrassing, but it happens all the time and it's like obvious that I'm nervous, but I'm not letting it stop me. And I'm gonna make myself get comfortable with being uncomfortable so that it gets easier. And that's the only way that it's become easier for me is pushing myself to do those things, to talk to people even when I'm not comfortable. And now I genuinely feel like I am a better communicator. I'm better at having conversations with people. When I meet someone for the first time, I keep the conversation going. And it just, it feels so much better. It feels like you've been liberated from yourself. Okay, so it's gonna be time to head out to yoga. This is what I'm wearing. Honestly, this is like my go-to shirt for anything. It's just this wellness, I like it. I've got my leggings on and I've got my Crocs on. Cause I think we're supposed to take shoes off before we walk into the building. So Crocs are gonna be the best. And then I've got my bag here. I just put my yoga block and I'm gonna take my mat. But they did say on the website that they have some there. So I'll just go in, I'll ask. And then if I need to take my stuff down, I'll take it down. But yeah, I am all ready to go. Okay, so I'm parked outside of the yoga studio and I wanted to continue my talk just real quick. Like real quick, because I got like five minutes before I should get off and go in. Anyways, I was saying that you know, there's traits that maybe you don't necessarily like about yourself that you can most definitely change and you don't always have to identify yourself that way. Another example that I can think of is that I've, I've talked about this before on my channel, but like I used to react with anger and I used to think that that's all I ever would be. Like I would just be a very angry person and I would never be able to stop being angry and react with anger. And especially because I was so upset with like my life not turning out the way that I wanted it to and I didn't know how to change it so that was causing me a lot of anger too and so that's why I think I was reacting with anger and so I just didn't have the patience for anything else anyways my point is I changed that because I wanted to change that and you can change it too you don't have to stay the same way you always have been if there's something about yourself that you don't necessarily like you can work towards changing it. and it might not be perfect right off the bat you know you might be an angry person and it's not like you're gonna wake up one day and just be super kind to everyone it's something you have to work on and like call yourself out every single time that you're doing it and acknowledge you don't want it to be part of you and you can change it slowly over time so that's just my thing that i always want to preach to other people is that just because you've always been some way doesn't mean you can't change it one more example i've always been a very lazy person like so lazy like i spent months where i was just feeling sorry for myself i was laying in bed i didn't have the energy nor did i want to do anything but look at me now i wake up i work out i read another thing i didn't used to like i journal and i'm going to a yoga class that you know i'm a little uncomfortable going because i'm like scared but i'm also like excited you know you can change anything about yourself that you want to change you do not have to stay stuck where you've always been you can change it anyways i'm gonna go ahead go in i see some people walking in and there's someone right there so no bye <laughs> Okay, yoga class number one done and it was such a success. I actually really, really enjoyed it. I planned to get a membership here because that was awesome. 
I loved it. We ended up doing, it was one hour. It actually burned 220 calories, active calories, 343 total calories. That was really good. Whew. I enjoyed that. Like I said, definitely gonna be coming back. They have a bunch of other classes like hot yoga, I think they have bar maybe pilates i felt very welcome which was one thing i was a little i think that's what i was nervous about right i said it like what if everyone's better than me i know nothing but it was so good i even met this really nice lady that sat next to me and that just goes to show how before i used to be such a shy person like anywhere i would go one i wouldn't go alone and two i would just sit there in silence like not wanting to bother anyone but literally i walked in there and i just started talking to like the person next to me and she was so nice so yeah that's just another proof hold on one second you see this is what i mean about my glasses fogging up there's no escaping it it's gonna happen that just goes to show my point that i was making about how you don't always have to be what you've always been you can change it at any point and you just need to stop holding yourself back and keeping yourself stuck in what you used to be and keeping yourself from what you could be you have so much potential guys so much potential and that's something i'm learning every single day is to stop doubting myself because you know i think so badly of myself but yet there's other people out there who think better of me you know who think highly of me and here i am just like putting myself down for every little thing okay let's let's go home now